Hey gang, so many moons ago I did a video tutorial covering the idea of hip reels as well as shoulder reels and what happens when we start to combine these two things together. Now today we're going to talk about reels in a slightly different kind of context. Rather than passing back and forth between hip reels and shoulder reels, we're going to talk about what happens when we actually stick these two things together. Now we're going to start off by thinking of the body as being something like a box where we have our two shoulders and our two hips as being corners of that box. Normally when we perform reels, either at the hips or up at our shoulders, we're trying to keep our reels centered around one set of corners, either the top set or the bottom set. The thing is, it doesn't have to be so. We can center them around one pair of corners that are over here on one side of the body, say both to my right. I could do this by, say, having my right hand high and my left hand low. From here, all I have to do is move the two staves back and forth in those reels that I'm used to. In this particular case, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to bring my right hand thumb back behind my shoulder and my left hand pinky end back behind my hip, like so. There's a variant that we can do on this where instead we're reaching that left hand back around behind our back, like so, going back and forth. Really, it's the exact same reel. We're just doing it from a behind the back kind of position. Now, if you're relatively comfortable with this combination of a hip and a shoulder reel, there's an additional tweak that we can do to it that will take us into something more like a four beat place or like a weave. Here's how it works. Now, we're gonna start off with our right hand high or left hand low with both of our thumb ends pointed up towards the ceiling. Or you can think of this as being that the right hand pinky end and the left hand thumb end are coming together, right? From here, we're gonna rotate our staves around so that our right hand thumb end and our left hand pinky end are meeting back behind our right shoulder blade. We're now gonna to continue to rotate the staves around so that we wind up in the same position that we started but over on the right hand side of our body. That is, it's going to be the right pinky end and left thumb end that are coming together. Now, we switch back over to the left or front side of our body and as we do so, it's going to be the right hand thumb end, the left hand pinky end that'll come together and then we rotate back to where we started, with the right hand up top, the left hand down below, and the right pinky end contacting the left thumb end. Does that sound confusing? It is a little bit. Let's try going through it just a little bit together. So we're gonna bring right thumb, left pinky together, right pinky, left thumb, right thumb, left pinky, right pinky, left thumb. Again, right thumb, left pinky, right pinky, left thumb, right thumb, left pinky, right pinky, left thumb and we wanna go straight back and forth across our body as we do that. Think of it as being that as you're going across your body, the first beat every time should have the right hand thumb and the left hand pinky coming in contact with each other, like so. If that feels relatively comfortable, let's try learning it on the other side of our body. The funny thing is, this is gonna be the exact same move. It's just gonna be that the top part of our body is pointed a different way. So, I start right here with my two thumb ends pointed up towards the ceiling, and I'm going to bring my right thumb in, my left pinky in together behind my right shoulder. No, my right shoulder, not my left shoulder. And then move over here to the left hand side of my body, bringing together my right pinky end and my left thumb end. Rotate them around so that my right thumb end and left pinky end are pointing towards each other again. Switch over back to where I started with my right pinky, my left thumb pointed up, and go back and forth between the two. Now you'll note, this time it feels like the staves are kind of pushing away from me rather than pulling towards me. I can, however, turn back to the other side of my body, in which case it feels like they're rotating towards me. And then rotate over to the left side of my body where it feels like they're rotating away from me. And back over to the right. And to the left. And to the right. And to the left. In which case I'm performing this weave now all around my body, almost like a waist wrap. Learn to perform that waist strap both with the right hand on top as well as the left hand on top. And in the next video, we'll cover a really cool flower that comes out of combining the two together. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in two weeks. Peace. A huge thank you to Third Earth Fireproof for sponsoring this month's videos. Based in the heart of Brooklyn and made in America, Third Earth is an innovative clothing line that features fire retardant, all natural fabrics and high quality craftsmanship, all with the fire performer in mind. Whether it be festival wear, costumes, or even everyday wear, Third Earth has an option that's right for you. Find them on Etsy and use the promo code DREXFACTOR to get 10% off your order. Also, a huge debt of thanks is owed to my Patreon supporters. If you or anybody that you know has learned something from one of the videos that I've put out, please consider signing up to make a monthly contribution. You'll get access to some great behind-the-scenes footage as well as great rewards. You can find me over at patreon.com slash DREXFACTORPOI. Thank you in advance.